This friend of mine is like Inspector Gadget, right? <laughs> we all have a person like that who loves all this stuff, and because he does, I don't listen to him. Because it's everything with him, right? And I said, Todd, you love all this stuff. I hate it all. So I really sort of blew him off consistently. And I wanted nothing to do with any social medias, including LinkedIn. And then I got, then I tried it once in a hotel in Holland, Michigan. I was over there for a series of meetings, and, and my afternoon meeting canceled on me. And I had a couple minutes, and I go, and I had to stick around for a night meeting. I'm going, crap, what am I going to do for two hours in Holland, Michigan? It's March. So I tried it, and in 40 minutes, I remember looking at my watch and going, Oh my gosh, in 40 minutes, I figured out this thing's pretty cool. Mm. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, he was right. So for two months, I was just trying this thing out, and I wasn't telling anybody I was doing it. And but Brenda saw me all the time, working like, what are you doing? I said, well, this is a crazy thing that Todd was always talking about. And of course, like wives like to do, well, he was right, huh? <laughs> you know, they love to do that, right? Because they really love it. And so for that whole year, while business was stinking, I was meeting a lot of business folks, 4,500 to be exact. 4,500 people in one year, I taught 105 classes that first year, all for free, all with the intentionality of going, I'm just gonna meet business people, and when they finally need furniture and this recovery happens, they might remember the bald guy that taught them LinkedIn, awful sales furniture. She finally came to one of my classes after a year because I think she wanted to find out if I had a girlfriend. And I was just gone so much, and she's going, I gotta make sure this guy's the real deal, because he, he's gone all the time, for all I know, he does have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So she came to my class, and she saw me hold up Jason's book at the very end, and I wasn't always doing that. I'd say, if you need more help, I'm done, this is all I know. Buy this guy's book, he really helped me. And we got in that car the night, and she said, that's a bunch of crap. I said, what's a bunch of crap? She said, well, those people will run right out and buy that guy's book, we should write a book. And I said, what? I said, you know my writing, I'm terrible. I am not a writer, but she was a court reporter, um, pre-kids, and so she was really good with the grammar. And she was the mom in the neighborhood that all the neighborhood kids, can your mom look at my paper? <laughs> right? She was that lady, and so so we, we embarked on writing this book. It took us about a year, and I would dictate a chapter, she would edit it during the week, and on Saturday morning we'd fight. <laughs> Every Saturday we'd fight about the chapter because I wanted it to be Wayne, she wanted it to be right. <laughs> And I wanted to leave slang and funny stories and all this because I thought that was what people wanted to hear. And she'd go, you can't talk that way in the book. It's just not right. And so we would compromise. And of course, by Saturday night, we'd hug and make up. That was all good, right? You go from, I don't want to do it, to being passionate about it, which is where most of us, mm -hmm. a lot of especially baby boomers, are in that space of, oh, please go away, right? Please go away like a bellyache. Because they're, they're fearful that it might be something good and they don't want to learn anything new. Mm -hmm. One example was a lady writes me a nice note. She, she, was, she said, Wayne, I bought your book. I really thought it was funny. I learned a whole bunch of nice things about LinkedIn and I would like to connect with you. I, I was on my flight from Pittsburgh to Los Angeles or something. And I said, and now in the old days I would have said, no, I don't know this lady. I'm just not connecting with her, right? I'm just, that's my strategy. I'm not gonna connect with her. Well, I pulled her profile up, which I always do when somebody wants to connect with me that's a stranger, and I saw she was the president of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society in New York City, and she was in charge of eight offices on the East Coast. Hmm. So I thought, and she wrote me nice things, right? And I'm thinking, okay, this would be a good example of somebody I probably should connect with. She's in New York City. I know a lot of friends in New York City. I'd love to go there and speak someday. So I said, yes. Well, four days later, she writes back to me and says, thanks for connecting. Uh, I did check our budget for the next year, and we have some room for some LinkedIn training webinars. That's beautiful. And we'd like you to do it. And I said, I just, when I would tell a story, I said, did you just hear that? I heard a cash register. <laughs> right? Yeah. With a total stranger. Yeah. Well, let's talk about these five secrets. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, hopefully a couple of them will actually be secrets to you. Uh, I haven't found anybody who said, I knew all five of them. <laughs>
and we never had a chance to go through our computer and go through 120 million resumes really and with keywords you go I want to meet that person that's the coolest thing so what, what, all I did was do this search this time with um, my search criteria was this graphic designer in their job title 50 miles from where I live now what you need to know about how the search happens is this there's 11 on 1011 people that meet that criteria everyone in this room if you do that criteria it'll come out 1011 for sure but what will be different for all of us will be this to get to some that don't have names okay first what will be different is the order the order will be different for all of us hmm. because this is what LinkedIn's default is relevance a word called relevance okay so unless you change this which we'll talk about changing this the default is relevant so LinkedIn goes I'm gonna give you the names of the people that I think are most relevant to you for that search you just hmm. did it's their secret sauce Google's got a secret sauce, so does LinkedIn. They don't share with us exactly how it works or we'd all try to beat it, right? They share certain parts so that we can work on it to move up. But this point, this tip is about you moving up the search. You moving up that when somebody's looking for you in Sturgeon Bay, graphics designer, you hope you come up and not on page six, mm -hmm. Because when's the last time you did a Google search and you started on page six? <laughs> Nobody does, right? We all start on page one. So this point is about being consciously taking those keywords of yours and putting them in your profile in the most important places and multiple times. On my website called powerformula.net, you will see under resources, there's a tab called free. In that, in that tab, there are uh, half a dozen or so PDFs that you can download. The one that will help you a ton with this tip right here is this one. LinkedIn profile keyword worksheet. So if you want to write that right next to this tip, this this uh, secret, that will be the worksheet that you'll want to pull to work through. And all what that will do is it, it's it's a fill in the blanks. I'm an old guy. I do fill in the blanks. Even though my daughters. My three beautiful daughters are all young 20s, late teens, and they think that's old school, fill in the blank. What are you doing, Dad? Crap, another fill in the blank. And I say, you know what? That's how I learn. That's how I do things. I'm sorry. I know you guys don't even have pencil and paper anymore, but that's how I learn. It's fill in the blank, but then what also is there, it shows you the boxes on LinkedIn that you should put that word those words okay. so my keywords are LinkedIn trainer LinkedIn consultant LinkedIn author LinkedIn speaker and office furniture Hayworth is the brand we sell we're exclusive so you gotta know what your words are what are the words that somebody wakes up tomorrow morning that they go I wonder if any of my friends know anybody who sells this or who does this it's the this it's whatever the this is in the simplest terms because we're all simple-minded people looking for people we don't glamorize what you do because they're not going to look for you with glamour points they're going to look for you with graphics design i need a graphics designer one of the things you want to make sure i point out about that worksheet is this 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 space right here that's your headline that's that is the most important real estate on your entire profile for searchability LinkedIn has come right out and told us you better make sure you got your words in there. Mm -hmm. You'll move up the fastest. There and one other place. And this is all in that handout. The other place you want to make sure you got your best words are here. It's called the, your job title. You can have it down here, and I still would, where you describe your job. Like, you know, so I got raised floors in here, so we sell those. We got movable walls. So I'm hoping that I got these brands that we sell. So if people want to look for a Han file cabinet, which people do, I have the word Han in there, so I, so I get found, right? But up here in this title, make sure it doesn't just say for your business owner. Oh. In parentheses, it should say graphic design, publications, brochures. Mm -hmm. And by having it in this dark space, they bolded it for a reason. They said, hey, I'm not going to tell you exactly, but I think you might want to put your best words in there. Because that's what you're going to want to do. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do your own search engine optimization test 
for your territory of the country. Doing just like I am for this graphic designer and saying to yourself, well, heck, I, don't, I, I, I want to be first. I want to be Holly. I want to be Holly. But in order to be Holly, you have to work with this thing called relevance. You have to work with the search that LinkedIn and, and, and what we've learned about how to get to the, because there's a thousand people here. And you don't want to be number thousand because nobody ever find you. And they have come right out and told us that this is great space for your keywords. And it's called skills. You will not find skills on your profile until you go into here and ask for them. Right here, add sections. So, so I'm right below my little blue box, you know, the blue box where he summarizes everything. Right below that, there's this new thing they said, oh, add yeah. sections. Okay. By clicking on add sections, you can go grab skills. And skills says, give me some more words. Give me some more words, the ones you think are most important. And LinkedIn has come out and said, you better add your words into your skills. Now, you can put those words with commas here. Specialties. Hmm. This is 500 characters, meant to be just that, keywords. Now, I, I, I put this in and I recommend this highly. Specialties put keywords and just ramble. You're telling people, don't bother reading this. It's not really part of my story. It's just some keywords. And what you might want to do is this. So that your network doesn't think you're nuts when you're doing this on that Sunday afternoon, trying to pick, go in and change your setting. Go in and change your setting to tell your network, you know what? You're not reading this stuff till I'm done. So that Sunday afternoon, I did that because I didn't want it. I didn't change his profile, change his profile. Go in and do this. So in your settings, when you're doing this little test, spending the week, spending the weekend to get better, unclick that so they don't say, man, he'll change his profile every stinking hour. What's going on with him, right? <laughs> Saving three searches. Okay, let's go back to here. So we do the search. Doing searches like this on the advanced people search is the number one feature on LinkedIn. And I say that because the people that are on my tips, which you're on my tips, right? Mm -hmm. I do that survey twice a year and I ask people what works. And always advanced people search, 85% of the people love this part. And groups is always very high too. Groups and advanced people search always seem to tag off between number one and number two feature. But, so a lot of people get how to do this. Most people don't know this exists. Your button right there, save. When save, once you hit the save button, you're basically telling Mr. LinkedIn, you're saying, you know what, I like that search you found for me, Mr. LinkedIn. I get some nice names there. Uh, would you mind continuing to look for people for me all the time? And Mr. LinkedIn says, oh, are you kidding me? I do this 24 seven, it's my job here. Hmm. Sends you an email every week. So what's happening here, this is sort of interesting because you're thinking to yourself, okay, I needed a graphic designer in Milwaukee. I looked at the list. I tried to get, they, I want to keep looking for more, whatever. I didn't find the right one. If one of your friends this very evening meets a new graphic designer, as you're sitting home watching the bird game, they'll show up in that email. Hmm. Because LinkedIn keeps looking for people that meet your search criteria on a consistent basis. And you get three of these on a free account. Okay, so I did the search. It always comes up relevance unless you tell LinkedIn you wanted some other order. And this tip is this taking this search, going down here to connections, excuse me, okay. So all I'm going to do is take the 1011. Still there, right? Different order. So what does this tell me? This tells me Josh Covelli is the most connected graphic designer in 50 miles from my zip code. Mm -hmm. So what? The so what is this? Mort, would you rather have a beer with somebody who has 10 connections or 500? Mm -hmm. Somebody in your industry. Somebody who might help you find some jobs or whatever you're looking for. Okay, so that that's the tip about most connected. Pretty cool, people don't know that exists. 
I think if you think creatively, I'll tell you a story how we did Most Connected. It was so much fun. I was teaching a class from Marquette University. Right? That's where I got my MBA. And I was working with the Development Department, Alumni Relations and Communications. And they were running events all over the country for alumni, right? Trying to raise some money. And, and they were going to do a new event in Seattle. And uh, they said, well, how would we, we want to put together a committee of influential business people from Seattle that are Marquette alums. And I said, well, that's easy. Watch this. Mm -hmm. And so we went in the, in the search. One of the boxes in the search, of course, is what? College. Right? So we put Marquette in there. And then we put Seattle in here. And then we pushed the button. And there were like 700. I said, so you've got 700 alums in the Seattle area that had their profile filled up full enough to have Marquette on there. And I said, so th that's your starting point. But let's change, let's resort these. Let's find the most connected Marquette alum in the Seattle area. Hmm. There's your chairman. There's, <laughs> that's the guy who would love to be in charge of the committee because he wants to meet new people. He's a networker. And I said, I go right down the list. I'd invite number two to be on the committee. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs>
to my groups so that people can learn about LinkedIn and hopefully see what I'm doing and go to my website, buy my book. 66,000 people. They don't all see it, but a bunch of them do. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that better than, than, than a group with 10 people. There's not much exposure. I'm not going to get the, the, you know, the, the traction I want. So that's why you just use keywords, find your groups, think about your strategies behind your groups, and don't, don't, don't forget your customers' groups. So many people get so down. I think, well, I'll join the graphic design group. Well, that's nice, but you, you're all in there with your competitors. Hmm. Why not? But, if, oh, I do a lot of banks. I do. Oh, why not join the bank group? And you may be the only graphic designer in that bank group, and you're listening to discussions, and you're going, I can help you with that. And there's nobody else. There's not another single graphic designer in a bank group. This is about the status update. Or discussions. But let's talk about the status update. That's this box right here. It's a very powerful tool. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so I'm back on the home page. Okay. So I'm back home. And now I get this box that pops up, share an update. Okay. All right. So many of us don't know what to do with that box. I don't know what to do with that box. Uh, especially those of us from a baby boomer generation. We go, well, I don't really have anything to say. Who would want to listen to me? What's so interesting about that is our kids who are on Facebook have everything to say, right? <laughs> yeah. They have, they have so much to say. You go, why are you sharing that? I wouldn't say that to you if I was in person. Why would I? Right? That's what they do, right? So I think we can learn a little lesson from them in this. We do have something to say. We're expert at stuff. We're here to help people. And this box is your way to stay in touch with your friends about things that some of them might be interested in. Ask questions, share events, talk about projects you've worked on, uh, all that kind of stuff. And, and it, it, after a while, you'll get a feel that it, it's really marketing. It's really a soft way to market. Now, you try not to use, use that box to say, we're having one heck of a big sale on a bunch of chairs of ours. Now, a couple times a year, you can probably do that. People won't go, that is no problem. But if I did that on a consistent basis, people go, Wayne, this is social media. In social media, we don't do this. We aren't about advertising and mm -hmm. spamming people. That's sort of the rules of the game. Now, if you're nice and you help people along the way, once in a while you slip in a couple of those and you'll be fine. People will not see it as a turnoff. But if all of a sudden you've got your status updates here and you guys have probably run into this and you find a person who's consistently putting that kind of stuff out, right? You start gagging. Don't you? Because it's social media and we're not supposed to do that. You know what you should do with those people? This. Goodbye, Shannon. Mm. You drive me nuts. <laughs> I don't want to hear your crap anymore. And by hitting that hide button, Shannon does not leave your network, but you will no longer see her status mm -hmm. updates. And you're saying, you know what? You just talk too much. You send over too many tweets. That's one of the things people do. They send over their tweets, and that's a different platform. That's meant to be 25 a day-ish, okay? Dogs, cats, cornflakes. LinkedIn's not. And when people use this little button, and I hate that LinkedIn put this button on here to tell you the truth, that button right there, when they added that, all of a sudden, our feed started getting filled with crap instead of business stuff. Mm -hmm. Instead of business stuff, because it's easy. Well, just because it's easy doesn't mean you should use it for that. Now, I tend to share my tweets. I use a thing called Hootsuite. Any you guys using that? I use Hootsuite to send out status updates to my Facebook, my, two, my Facebook account, my, my fan page, my LinkedIn, and my Twitter at the same time. But I'm always talking about business stuff. I'm never talking about cornflakes. Is to strategically think about using this box to communicate with your network about the things you think show that you're helping, smart, expert, want to be involved, that kind of stuff. Have a strategy for sharing because you know what it is more than anything? It's don't you love your mug showing up here? <laughs> and your name to your network on a consistent basis. But Wayne, I just saved $30,000. was one of the things you showed us in your class. I said, what was it? He said, well, you talked about using the status update to find people. He says, so I thought to myself, before I call a headhunter, I hate that because you're in the business, 
I thought I'd post in there, I'm looking for a VP of manufacturing for my company with this criteria. And four days later, one of my friends said, if you're still looking, I had lunch with a guy that I think would be perfect. Mm. One Saturday morning, I was writing my tips and, and Brenda came up to me and she said, I write my tips every weekend, you probably get them on Sunday, right? People say I'm, I'm sort of as consistent as church, I'm always mm -hmm. on Sunday. I write my tips on Saturday morning and Brenda came up to me two Aprils ago and she said, uh, he, uh, our daughter doesn't have a, your daughter doesn't have a job for the summer yet. She's gonna be a senior in high school, right? So she said, um, I said, yeah, what does that have to do with me? It was April, last week in April, and she's gonna get out of high school in a few weeks. I said, she said, well, you go around telling everybody you've got this great big network. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about doing something a little for the family with that network? And I said, let me try. And I typed in that box. I'm looking for a job for my senior high school daughter, babysitting, yard work, clerical, anything. I pushed the button. Sunday night, I gave her a list. Five people, here's her names, here's her emails. Cool. She got one of those jobs and she's had that job three straight summers now. Mm -hmm. Oh, we do. Huh. And because all I was doing was saying, hey, network, I got this issue. She's a good worker, she may be good for you too. And, you know, and so it's just a great way to just talk to people and ask questions and see if you can read what other people are needing and doing. And People just don't use it enough because we just don't think we're either creative or interesting or we don't have a plan to share.